What's up guys? I have a pretty interesting video for you here today, which I think is going to completely change the way you think about shapes when you're modeling. So what I have here are six different yet kind of similar shapes going on, and you're probably not going to notice too much of a difference until I begin to point out some of them. The first thing I want to mention before we go over any of these shapes is that what I see a lot of beginners doing is when they're learning to model and block things out and just kind of make shapes, they start with a very simple and blocky form, kind of like this. They don't have any dynamic shapes going on, no curves, and nothing like that. And this piece would be a good start, but you can really make your models pop just by using a few different bevels in different locations. Check this out. Notice how if I were to just go in here and just take these two edges and bevel them, give a nice round bevel, notice how much nicer the light reflects and how much more dynamic this shape begins to look. Now we're going to go over this in a second, but one thing I really want to point out here are all these other shapes I put together. Although the bevel placement here on the back is the same, we have a bevel here and a bevel here as well. Look on the front. We have a bevel right around here and a bevel up here, whereas on this one, the bevel is actually here instead. And notice that small effect can really change the overall look of the shape. See how this corner right here looks a little bit different than this corner, yet there's one that probably looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to you. To me, it would actually be this one because the entire thing looks a lot more soft and dynamic as opposed to this really sharp kind of pinched corner right here. This can really come down to personal preference in some cases, but uh, this is something I really want to point out because I think a lot of people don't realize how many different shape combinations they potentially have, and they just leave a lot of cool shapes on the table that they didn't even notice were there. So check this out. Let's go over to this one as well. Notice that this piece here, we have a bevel rounded on this side, and on this side, compared to this one where the bevel is actually rounded on this side. And all these different shapes kind of play together to make a model look a lot cooler or a lot weaker. For example, if I were to eliminate some of these pieces in terms of just general aesthetic, I'd probably throw away this one first because although the shape's cool, it looks very monotone because we're simply repeating that same exact pattern we have going on here. As compared to say, I don't know, this one or this one, I think this one's pretty cool. We actually have a nice, you know, set of dynamic curves and things going on around here. Honestly, I think this one is my favorite because it really has a nice uniformity to it while still maintaining that overall curvy look. Notice that the top is kind of defined with very hard edges right around here, whereas the interior portions, the more concave portions, have a lot bigger, rounder bevels, kind of like here and here. And all I've done to get these different shapes is I've simply went to this base shape right here and put bevels in different locations. I think a lot of people don't realize how simple this concept really is. So what I'm going to do is give you a demonstration here. I think this will provide you with a lot of value. I'm going to move this all the way over so it's out of the way. So whenever you have a blocky shape like this, try going in and experimenting. Try going in and, for example, just maybe beveling in here. Oh, also, one thing I like to do is unmark the edges if they're marked as sharp. Reason being is because if I bevel them, notice that the blue edges here that are marked sharp, we kind of see some sharp effects right here. Whereas if I unmark that first, that actually goes away. It looks a lot softer. So I'd recommend doing that beforehand. Um, some people don't remember, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and bevel that. And then maybe what I could do is unmark these and then bevel this area and this really makes the shape flow a lot nicer and this is where we really begin to have a lot of different combinations you know I could have put the bevel right here but I could have also put the bevel right here instead which completely changes the overall form of the mesh or perhaps what I could have done is even put the bevel right here which changes our options once again it really depends on the general look and flow of shapes that you're going for now in this case, I think this is probably my favorite because it kind of flows naturally with the bevel on the inside here. This is just a very intuitive feeling. It's hard to explain, but the more you play with these shapes, the more you kind of feel how the shapes interact with each other. So pretty cool. I could even make this one a little bit smaller if I wanted to. Don't forget to unmark the edges first. Pretty cool. And then maybe I could make this corner here a little bit softer. 
And notice how it just kind of, it's like a compound effect. The more choices you make, the less, um, less options you have compared to other choices you could have made. So as you start making these design choices and where you want to place these bevels, you know, make a duplicate, experiment with other areas where you could place a bevel and just kind of see what shape you like more. So for example, here, I might not know immediately what I like. So maybe I'll just try this one and just take a look at it, see if I like the shape. And, you know, if I don't, what I can do instead is I could, you know, put the bevel here perhaps and see how that looks. So I could go in, kind of bevel that. I think that looks a little bit cleaner. And then I could even go in here and bevel this area. And now we just have a really nice, clean, continuous mesh kind of flowing um, all around here into each other. And notice this didn't take me much time. I went from a super blocky looking shape to something that looks a lot more clean and pleasing to look at. The light captures very nicely on those bevels there. The shapes are all more natural and smooth. They kind of play with each other naturally. Compared to this one where all these different shapes are just harsh, they're clashing, they look uncomfortable. You know, human beings don't like to look at sharp objects. It's just kind of a turn off, right? But when you make things look a lot softer, and cleaner, you really begin to get some better results. And this is where I'd really recommend just every day, just play with different shapes and kind of see, like program your brain by playing with different shapes in here, you're going to intuitively begin to kind of see how different shapes are gonna play with each other because just by experimenting and just feeling things out, you're gonna have a completely different outlook on how your uh, 3D modeling looks and just how your general uh, form looks on your model. So you can just go in here and just keep playing with it and just see what you like. It's actually quite fun because you can get some really interesting designs and also some really not so interesting designs, which I think is uh, probably the best part. Notice this one's already quite different. Could even go in here and bevel this. Super cool. So really it's all about the placement of the, of the bevels. You go in, you figure out what plays better and what doesn't play as good. And that's just going to be up to a more um, kind of an intuitive uh, subconscious feeling, I guess you could say. But this is pretty cool. And after you kind of have a few different drafts and just, you know, you think you're at a point where you could kind of choose one, you can start kind of eliminating the other shapes you don't really like. So I don't like this one too much here. I also don't like this one too much here. Too many different uh, shapes are kind of clashing together. I just don't like the contrast of the angle here and the angle here either. I like everything to flow into each other nicely. So I could also get rid of this one. This one's actually really cool. I think this is probably my favorite one. It just feels right. This one's not too bad either. I'm not a big fan of these corner bevels though. So then I could just knock that one out. And this one's also quite good. I think these are my uh, favorite two out of all of them. Let me move that back a little bit. And you're gonna see these are pretty similar. The only difference we have on these two is simply the placement of the bevel in the back. This one kind of have, has a bevel rounding up through here and on the side, whereas this one has a bevel right here and also a bigger one here as well. And they're both pretty cool. If I had to choose one, I would probably choose this one here. It's a hard choice, but I really like these more just thinned out, harder edges combined with these natural flowing shapes. I'm not really a big fan of these massive uh, bevels we have going on the side, but that's just me. So this is something I really encourage you guys to do. Make some really simple shapes in Blender and just put different bevels on different locations. Play with booleans, play with the placement, and really begin to see how different shapes interact with each other. And then you're going to begin to understand how some models look visually appealing and how some don't look that appealing because they're just a clash of detail, angles are all off balance, just things don't look right. That is why when you look at certain artwork, you get wowed, and why when you look at other artwork, it just doesn't feel right. It's all a matter of the shapes. So I hope this video provided you some value here. I thought this was a very important concept that not too many people discuss, and I really think it's a good tool to use whenever you're modeling. Now, if you want some additional design tips, you can always head over to our website, check out some of our courses and some of our free products. We do have a free design guide. I've mentioned it before. It shows my five favorite design elements. So if you want to kind of get a bit more of an idea of how you can build on top of your shapes, you can pick that up. There's a link in the description. I think you'll enjoy it. So that's about it for this video. Really hope this provided you with some value and I'll see you in the next one.